So for about the past year, there's been a campaign against Marvel's upcoming Captain Marvel movie. Uh, we got a hint of her in the post-credit teaser for Avengers Infinity War, and then the trailers hit. Why isn't she smiling, was the cry from a certain group of people. Yes, there was actually some that thought telling a fictional woman to smile was a good look. But truthfully, what really seemed to irritate in a lot of the early trailers was the text that started with Hope Begins, and then the words with her, and then an A and an O faded in on each side of her, making it with a hero. This rankled a segment of fandom that seems very put off by even the hint of feminism or even diversity in general in their entertainment. These people believe the film is not merely a superhero movie and not even just a positive hero for young girls uh, or women in general. They feel directly insulted by the marketing and artistic choices the filmmakers have made. In fact, just by the behavior of some, you would almost think that this film is on, uh, you know, God's Not Dead levels of ideological propaganda. The, the film features the uh, current Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, and in her modern Captain Marvel outfit, rather than one of her more uh, traditional uh, swimsuit-inspired designs. It is a design that has had some critics complaining from the beginning that it destroys her femininity um, and does not... Uh, it makes her too masculine. But, of course, part of the problem here also goes back to Captain Marvel. Well, Captain Marvel has not always been Captain Marvel. And even this is a sore spot for some of the movie's critics. So, a little history. So, Captain Marvel was originally a man. Created in the 60s, part of his creation lies in the fact that the trademark for Fawcett's Captain Marvel had lapsed. And so, jumping on an opportunity, Marvel thought it made perfect sense to have their own Captain Marvel. And, admittedly, why not? So, the character, Marvel, a Kree warrior, is sent to Earth for observation. He ultimately rejects the Kree and sides with Earth and remains here as a superhero. Now, Marvel was eventually trapped in a place called the Negative Zone. Uh, he had special wristbands that allowed him to switch places with Hulk's supporting player, Rick Jones. In a battle, he was exposed to nerve gas that resulted in inoperable cancer. Um, in 1982, Marvel released their very first graphic novel format book, uh, written and drawn by Jim Starlin, The Death of Captain Marvel, laid the character to rest. That same year, Marvel introduced a new Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau. Uh, her powers were different as she was an energy and light-based hero. Now, Monica has been cited by some folks as kind of their defense. Basically, Monica is their black superhero friend to prove they're neither racist nor sexist. They'd have been totally cool if Monica Rambeau had been the character uh, at the center of the Marvel movie. But eventually, uh, Monica Rambeau took on the role of Photon and is now currently Spectrum. Uh, and again... At the time, it definitely, as a black woman, that was fairly uncommon. And to give her, you know, the prominent name of Captain Marvel, that was a big deal. Now, there were four more before Carol Danvers took the title, but frankly, this is not a exploration of the history of the character in the comics. Uh, so, the thing to note is Carol Danvers is not a newly created character. She was actually introduced in the tail end of the 60s um, as an Air Force pilot, 
who then got caught up in an explosion with Captain Marvel. And this resulted in her DNA being combined with his DNA, and this resulted in superpowers, because... Comics! So, she became Ms. Marvel for about a decade or so. She had a couple of other identities uh, between the late 80s and the early 2000s, and then she returned to her Ms. Marvel uh, moniker around 2005. It should be noted that feminism has long been a part of the character, in spite of her costume uh, basically looking like a swimming suit. Um, the Miz itself was part of a feminist trend of the 70s, and the comic attempted to uh, acknowledge the various issues women were fighting for uh, in the, the 70s era. Now, your mileage may vary on how well it was done. A, a lot of times, the social consciousness of comics in the 70s could be kind of embarrassingly wonky, because a lot of it was being written by white men. And that's not a, a diss on white men. It certainly does kind of skew the understanding of the situations a little. Now, in 2012... Marvel, under the guidance of writer Kelly Sue DeConnick, uh, graduated her to the role of Captain Marvel. Uh, and this came with a costume redesign from artist Jamie McKelvey. Again, I noted that uh, there were people that felt that it was too masculine. The thing is, is well, the costume was kind of more in line with uh, paying homage to the original Captain Marvel and like its colors and its uh, design placement of certain iconograph iconic of her symbol <laughs> people there were people who were upset and are still upset um well because it wasn't this you know because nothing makes a female hero's costume too masculine like covering her whole body so now that we're caught up it is 2019, Marvel has made 20 movies about male superheroes, and it only put a black man front and center in the 18th film. It is film 21, and they're really trying to push this as being worth the wait. They're really pushing that girls can be superheroes too, which is also known as the evil insidious feminist plot to destroy men. Now, like the Black Panther, uh, there's a GoFundMe that got started up um, to help underprivileged young girls get to go see the movie. And this has angered grown men who like to cut up dolls and rip up comics on YouTube. But, you know, oh well. Uh, they felt this was an unworthy cause. We should be giving to cancer research. One such person was a massive virtue signaler who claimed that he gave $10,000 that month to cancer research. You know, apparently these people must really despise the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I mean, giving kids trips and a chance to meet celebrities rather than actual cancer research directly. Oh, what an awful charity. Now, add to this recent comments from Captain Marvel herself, Brie Larson, and you just have more anger. She really set off some people to the point that she's being compared, and I, I kid you not, to Hitler. One of the things she observed was that press junkets were pretty much all white male press, and she expressed a desire to see minority representation. Of course... As is always the case with people who take offense to these things, it was construed as Larson being anti-white and anti-male. No, it's not. Uh, firstly, there's an entirely fair observation here. Overwhelmingly, when I, as a viewer, see interviews from press junkets, they are mostly white men. She was simply asking for companies to open the door wider and include more people of color and women. This is hardly a radical notion. And as Larson put it, she's not asking to take away anyone's chair, but simply asking to add chairs to the table. Now, her exact quote was, I don't need a 40-year-old white dude to tell me what didn't work about A Wrinkle in Time. 
It wasn't made for him. I want to know what it meant to women of color, biracial women, to teen women of color. Now, some 40-year-old white men took offense to this. They went into action accusing her of having said that Captain Marvel was not meant for them. And she did not. But she was suggesting that some films are not aimed at certain audiences. And this should not be controversial. And maybe, just maybe, people outside that audience are not always going to be the best judge of a film's effectiveness. However, at no point did she declare Captain Marvel is not for 40-year-old white men. But I will say this, it is certainly not the only or even main audience that the film is going for. Because the fact is, is Marvel movies are not meant primarily for the white 40-something male comic nerd community who do not make up all of the comic community anymore, for one thing. But they're aiming for a much wider audience. Uh, a lot of people who see Marvel movies are not, in fact, comic book collectors. They aren't into following comics. They just are enjoying the superhero movies. And as a 40-something-year-old white man... I know I'm not the only dollar that the film is seeking. And I'm probably not even the most important dollar they're seeking. I am part of a larger audience here, and part of that means the film will not be pandering to my history with the characters and comics. In this vein, uh, some have taken issue with the film leaping right into Carol Danvers being the only Captain Marvel. They feel the film should really acknowledge uh, the original Captain Marvel, you know, the male one, and then pass the baton to Carol. Why not have her be Miss Marvel, they argue, and be in her most famous costume? You know, the swimsuit. But here's the thing. As Captain Marvel, she's always worn a version of the suit we are seeing in the film. The swimsuit is the costume she wore as Ms. Marvel. The film is called Captain Marvel. It makes no sense to have her in the Ms. Marvel outfit. So, why not include the Ms. Marvel backstory? Well, because again, the movie's called Captain Marvel. And the thing about comic book movies is they don't have the same luxury as monthly issues have. You know, months to tell a story. Years. The concept of adapting the long-form storytelling of comics, or anything created in another medium really, is the art of compressed storytelling. Is it really important to understanding Captain Marvel to make her a legacy character from the start? Well, not really. Most of the audience uh, for the MCU are not comic nerds. Uh, simplifying for the sake of understanding is part of that goal in making these films. Just starting with Carol Danvers, that makes the most sense. Now, a lot of these same people have been predicting an embarrassingly bad failure for Marvel uh, with this film. Uh, its predictions of crashing and burning have all been pretty much the same talking points over and over. Uh, you know, it's because of SJW politics, um, feminism, and anger at Larson for having the gall to suggest that maybe not every movie is aimed at, you know, 40-year-old white men. I've even seen uh, this recently on a friend's Facebook page, uh, you know, just in a, where some of the people in the comments were giving these silly, you know, kinds of commentary, uh, hoping the movie would fail because of this. Um, and I can honestly tell you, it, it, it gets old. As we've been getting closer to the movie's re-release and pre-sales for tickets have gone out, well, the pre-sale of tickets are beating other popular superhero films right now. Uh, it's nowhere to the heights of Black Panther or Avengers Infinity War, but it's good. So they tried abusing the Rotten Tomatoes site with uh, bombing with advanced review reactions to indicate that nobody was interested in the film. So what this did is it convinced Rotten Tomatoes to finally disable pre-release reviews, um, which it always should have. 
that there's no value to that to knowing who's interested and who's not interested other than you know somebody being able to go oh look look it's got a high want to see it rating or look look it doesn't have a high who cares um this has made them pretty angry but you know everything does uh and if you look at youtube uh the trailers are actually getting they've got far more upvotes than downvotes and i think that's because really they do look pretty fun and exciting uh like a great sci-fi actioner the trailers get me excited to see the film now this positive news tied to the film uh both early good word on the film itself the predicted box office um well it's forced a change in the critical narrative of course the movie's going to have a large box office. Why? It doesn't really matter what movie that Marvel had released following Infinity War. It's the newest film after the massive hits of Black Panther and Avengers Infinity War, and it leads into Infinity War's uh, sequel, Endgame. Uh, of course, this did not pan out this way for Ant-Man and the Wasp, which did make more money than Ant-Man, but nothing near Infinity War or Black Panther. It had a $75.8 million opening weekend. Captain Marvel is currently on track for doubling that. So, yeah, it's nowhere near as big as Black Panther, but Black Panther had the benefit of a four-day weekend. And Infinity War, of course, is its own thing. The Avengers movies tend to crush their competition. So, no, there was no guarantee that Captain Marvel would be on this path to a potentially big success. Instead, it appears that there are a lot of people excited to see Captain Marvel this March. And that's great. I mean, honestly, it's pretty pathetic to watch grown men whine that maybe a film wants to be fun for more people than just them, uh, more than just 40-something white nerds like myself. I hope girls and women have a great time. I hope guys have a great time. Frankly, uh, it's kind of rare for me to root for a film to fail to begin with. You know, I wanted Alita Battle Angel to succeed. I was really happy with Wonder Woman's success. Aquaman's success was awesome. I want there to be fun comic book movies. I want mainstream audiences to continue to enjoy the heroes that I've loved over the years. And even if the version they're getting is a little different than the one I knew, well, that's okay. Me, I'm going into Captain Marvel and hoping it lives up to the trailers because it looks like fun. And there's just nothing bad about that. So, thanks for watching. Uh, you can interact in the comments below. Uh, you can also go to the Tripping Through Gateways blog. Um, and also, uh, you can interact with me on Twitter, at Tom Wade. Uh, hit the like button if you choose, or I suppose you can downvote it as well. And I will see you next time. Okay, so before I roll the credits, I want to take a moment to point out the uh, art that you're seeing here is by Richard Pace. Pace is a, an established comic book artist. Uh, you may have seen his work, for instance, in Imaginary Fiends, written by Tim Seeley. Um, really great series. I had mentioned in earlier in the video a GoFundMe campaign, uh, and for that campaign, after he made a donation, uh, Richard went and made the offer to people that if you did donate and ma at least match, if not more, uh, he would give you a personal sketch, uh, a character of your choice. And uh, th this was a great, I, I think this was just kind of a great little incentive deal. Um, and I thought it was going to be just like, you know, a nice little, you know, sketch, uh, a headshot. Um, he actually did a watercolor image, and if you go to his Instagram, you will see 
a variety of the ones he's done for people, and he went all out. And I, I gotta say, I'm really impressed. He did not. He 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 gives you an amazing image, and I loved the I, I loved it as a black and white image. And I was gonna use the black and white image in my uh, for my credits here, but I wanted to make sure that uh, Richard was okay with it, so I contacted him through Twitter. And it's like, oh, well, let me add a splash of color to that. And when when would you need it? And I'm like, well, you know, maybe Thursday. Uh, I, just in time for the release. But, you know, because I didn't want to push. I, I, and within an hour, he had this image before you, this wonderful, beautiful image. Uh, it's just awesome. Um, so I want to say thanks to Richard Pace for uh, coloring this for me. And now roll credits. <laughs> 